Toronto area Liberal MP has announced she will not run in the next election. She's blaming the current political culture. Pam Damoff says she's faced threats and misogyny to the point where she often fears just going out in public. And Pam joins me now to talk about that. Uh, Pam, pretty hard to hear what women go through on the job. I'm just wondering for you, what has been the most, I guess, egregious or offensive thing you've experienced? If you're facing threats so bad that you can't go to work, you would imagine that you would have an example of these serious threats and that you would have reported these to police and there would be active investigations and people should be held accountable for making these threats, right? I think it's um, it's a combination of things and it's not one individual incident. I think what for me has changed over the last nine years has been really the, um, the discourse that I, I encounter at home. Um, and, and also just the tone uh, and the toxicity in Parliament. But it hasn't been one specific incident. It's just been a... I, I've experienced misogyny since I got elected. And uh, Look at her nonverbal cues. She's grinning when she says that she's been the victim of misogyny and attacks. She's grinning. It, it, that's not new. It's just gotten worse over the years. And... Look at her blinking, how fast she's blinking. It's off the charts. Nobody blinks that much unless they're lying. And the personal threats have, have definitely increased. Not as bad as some other MPs get it. I'm not, you know. Personal threats have increased. There she goes with the grin again. She's lying. People grin when they're being insincere, when they're being smug, when they're not telling the truth, when they're being defensive. She's lying. It, it, other people have it wor worse than I do, but it's just, it's gotten a lot worse and it's just not for me. Yeah. It, it She's tucking her chin. Another nonverbal cue, sign of defensiveness. She's protecting her neck. It's just too bad that you have to even make that comparison about getting threats and, and other people having even worse threats than you have had. When did it start to change? Did you notice a particular point where things started to change? It changed, uh, well, the last election, I definitely noticed it was different, but I think things changed over the course of the pandemic. And a friend of mine said to me that, you know, she was she was talking to a professor who said that the way that people deal with threats has changed, whether it's a threat to their health, a threat to their safety, and whether it's a lot, I, I don't know the reason why, but it's definitely been since the pandemic that it's gotten much, much worse. How have you handled it in the, in the past few Another grin there. Years, because we are now well away from the pandemic. I'm just wondering how you have been able to handle it in that interim period. I, you know what? I, I mean, I've been fine. I love... She asks her how she handled all this hate, all this misogyny, all these attacks. And her answer is, I'm fine. But you're also claiming the whole reason you're stepping down is because you're not fine. And you're not even stepping down right now. You're stepping down in a year and a half. So how bad are these threats, really? You can continue your job for another year and a half. At the same time, these threats are so bad, it doesn't make sense, and you're fine? She just contradicts herself with everything that she says. For what I do, I love the job. I have an amazing family. I have an amazing staff. How do you love your job if you get threats all the time? And the threats are so bad that you need to quit your job. How do you love it? Nobody loves their job if they're getting threatened every day. Nobody that work with me um it's just it's gotten to the point where i just don't feel that i can continue as an mp and and uh i, I are you sure it's not because the liberals are down in the polls and you know that you're not going to get reelected if you run again the conservatives are going to sweep and you're going to lose your riding is that maybe why you're deciding not to run and you're just going to blame it on misogyny and toxic culture i think it's it's not right that people who run for pu public office should be subjected to this kind of use and it's not unique to politicians journalists women in journalism are certainly facing a similar kind of abuse i just think that we need to be have more empathy for one another and treat each other with kindness do you think that and from your experience and time in the house do you see male politicians dealing with the same kind of tactics 
It's, I, I don't think it's the same. I remember Sean Fraser saying to me quite a few. You don't think it's the same? The number one most criticized politician in all of Canada is a male. It's Justin Trudeau. And people are pretty nasty with the things that they say about him. I would say that he faces it 10 times worse than any woman faces any misogynistic or toxic attacks. Years ago, actually, that the, the kind of abuse that, he, that, that, that myself and at the time it was Bernadette Jordan that was talking to him. And he just said, what I get is totally different. I tend to get um, people attacking on policy, whereas for you and, and uh, other women, it's, it's, it's personal attacks. Mm -hmm. Catherine McKenna, of course, cited similar reasons for, for leaving politics. What are you... Catherine McKenna cited similar reasons for leaving politics. Well, let's take a look at Catherine McKenna then. Catherine McKenna quit politics because she was in the middle of a scandal where over $200 billion went missing and could not be accounted for. She claimed they were infrastructure projects that the money was spent on, yet couldn't provide any information on these projects and over 20,000 projects were unaccounted for. There's no record of them starting, no record of them completing, no record of them even existing. And that's over 20,000 jobs or contracts worth over $200 billion. Poof, gone. All under Catherine McKenna's watch. That's why she left politics. A two women interested in politics and thinking about taking up a career in politics. So what would you say to women thinking about taking up a career in politics? If it's such a toxic environment, I would hope you would suggest that they don't take up a career in politics because otherwise they'd have to go through the same thing that you're going through, which is horrible. You wouldn't want anybody else to face that. Well, I, I mean, I would encourage women to run. I think what I would like to see is is women from all parties and all pol political persuasions start to speak up that enough is enough. So, <laughs> so you want more women in politics because they need to speak up and their voices need to be heard. Yet you're a woman in politics and you're stepping down. Thus, less women in politics, less women's voices being heard. And, and have our male colleagues um, also uh, speak up and change the tone. People, people look to politicians or they used to look at politicians and, and look for leadership from politicians. And I think it's time that, that everyone steps up. And, and, you know, what I saw yesterday in the House of Commons was just disgusting. And it's... it's She's referring to Pierre Polyev calling Justin Trudeau a wacko prime minister. That's what she's referring to as disgusting. It should not be reflective of our, our, um, the respect that Parliament deserves and the respect that we should be showing to one another. Do you think that male politicians are not stepping up now, more recently? You said they should be. Are they just not doing it now? I... <sighs> Yeah, they are, um, and I and I have, you know, I have people in my party who've been amazing. Um, people in your party who've been amazing, sticking up for women's and women's rights. How about all the people in your party that have been accused of sexual assaults, or sexual crimes, sexual misconduct? How many of them are there? What about the leader of your party? He admitted to groping a female years back. You have countless Liberal MPs who have been accused of or charged with sex crimes, sexual assault, sexual misconduct, and those are liberals, not conservatives. You but but I see it across the aisle, and I and I see quite frankly the way the opposition leader um, treats Parliament and and speaks about other people, and when he makes comments about. Um, conspiracy theories i i hear them in the writing and i get blamed for um just crazy kind of uh, like what you got any examples conspiracy theories that filter their way down to the population so i i, I think there needs to be a change in the tone that's being used in the house pam damoff good to have you thanks very much for sharing your time and your story today appreciate that thank you good.